so in this particular lecture we are going to discuss about open source okay in the last lecture we have discussed about what we call an interior right so let us just recall that okay so <coughs> so let xd be a metric space be a metric space and let us have a as a non empty subset of x and we choose an element from x okay, so p belongs to x is a is an interior point is an interior point of x if and only if there exists some r greater than 0 such that an open ball centered at p and radius r is completely contained in a this was what we call an interior of a interior point of a of a set okay and if we choose the collection of all such interior points then that we call the interior of a set so this is collection of all such interior points okay for some r greater than zero. okay this is called the interior of a set now see this is very much trivial to say this is very much trivial to say that this interior of a point must be contained in A. Right? This is very much trivial to say that this interior interior of a point is, is contained in that particular set. Right? Right? Because <coughs> see this is this is pretty easily understandable that if you take any point which does not belong to A. If you take any point which does not belong to A, there, you know, basically there won't exist any radius such that this open ball is completely contained in. This open ball is completely contained in. Okay. See, uh, you know, if 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 we talk about uh, it, it in more details, that is, see, when we have discussed open balls, it is very much clear that this point P, this point P. This point P, this must be inside this open ball. This must be inside the open ball, and this open ball is contained in A, so this must also belong to A. So this must also belong to A. Is it clear? Is it clear? If so happens, then this interior of a set is completely contained in A, right? It's completely contained in A. <coughs> so suppose we talk about open set. Suppose we talk about open set. Open set. So open set is basically that non-empty subset of a metric space in which in which the set itself is contained in its interior. Okay. So let X D be a metric space. Let X D be a metric space and let a be a non empty subset of a then a is said to be an open open set if a is contained in its interior or a simply equals its interior okay because a interior is already contained in it and so if a is contained in its interior then that implies that a equals its interior okay or more generally we can say that every point of a is an interior point of a okay every point of a is an interior point of a. is it clear if you talk about example so the most basic example we can choose is the suppose you have R D that is the real number with its usual metric. Then every open interval is an open set. Every open interval is an open set. Okay. Every open interval is an open set. Clear? 
okay and let us say one more thing suppose we have a discrete matrix okay a little uh, no, not discuss discrete matrix case in this case no this uh, okay one more example which we which is which is more trivial is that for any matrix space x is always open the whole matrix space is always open in itself x is always open okay null sets are also open sets null sets are also sets is it clear is it clear okay acha <clears throat> and next comes a very important theorem that is every open ball in a matrix space is an open set okay every every open ball in a matrix space in a matrix space is an open set okay first let us break down this particular theorem and then we will be moving on to the proof of it okay so yeah, so every open ball so let us have an open ball in a so suppose we have a matrix space xd let xd be a matrix space okay okay and which is an arbitrary element from x let p belongs to x so what is an open ball with center at p so u p r is an open ball with center at p okay what do we need to prove we need to prove that this is an open set to prove that this is an open set what we need to show we need to show that if we take any any point from this open ball if we take any point from this open ball then there exist at least one such radius so that the open ball with center at that point is completely contained in this right that is the simple proof so we need to prove is that to prove to prove for all let's say a belonging to u p r there exists let's say some delta greater than 0 such that u a delta is completely contained in u p r okay so if so, if so happens for all the elements of this open ball that means the every element of this open ball is an open set right every element of this open ball sorry every element of this open ball is an interior point which implies that this open ball is a is an open set is it clear is it clear so we do so so we take an element from u p r okay. now now proof let's let a b an element from u p r acha if so happens then that implies the distance between a and p is less than r the distance between a and p is less than r is it clear <coughs> is it clear now what we do is that we choose see now we have studied these things that suppose See, D A P is less than R, right? Now, if so happens, then we always have some positive number. So this is this is in, inside. All this is happening inside this matrix space X T. Okay. So, if so happens, then we can choose a positive number delta such that the distance between A and P plus this delta is also less than R. Okay. Is also less than R. is it clear is it clear okay. now we need to show this right so taking any element from u a delta we need to show that it also belongs to u p r which will have this uh, statement true right okay so now we choose an element from u a delta okay so let x belongs to u a delta okay. now that is this implies that dxa dxa is less than delta dxa is less than delta is it clear okay now now what will be can we write dxp 
can we write dxp as as less than equals to dxa dxa plus dap right right you can do so dxp we can write it as dxa plus dap right okay now this dxa it is less than delta and this dap is less than r minus delta right this dxa is less than delta and this dap is less than r minus delta so this basically implies that dxp is less than r right which implies x belongs to u p r which implies u a delta is contained in u p r which implies which implies p is an interior point which implies p is an interior point right sorry a is an interior point a is an interior point. We are two. Okay, so eight. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Sorry, sorry. So what we have said is that suppose you take any open ball, every element of it, every element of it is an interior point. Yeah. So uh, yeah, A is an interior point, which implies that U P R is open. U P R is open. Right? Because A was arbitrary. A was arbitrary. Is it clear? Is it clear? A pictorial representation of what we did is basically. Something on this sort, right? So, suppose this is the open ball with center at P and radius R. Okay. Now what we do is that this is the point A. Okay. So, so this is the open ball with center at A and radius delta. Okay. This is what we have done. This is the construction which we have done here mathematically. Okay. So every open ball is an. So since P is also arbitrary, it plays every open ball. Every open ball is an open set. Okay. Every open ball is. Is it clear? Okay. Next, we discuss some properties related to open sets. properties of open sets so let x d be a metric space let x d be a metric space property number 1 if you take if you take a family of open sets okay if you take a family of open sets if G alpha, alpha belonging to lambda. This is the indexing set. Is a family of open sets. Is a family of open sets. Maybe finite, maybe infinite. Is a family of open sets. Then, union of all these open sets is also an open set. G is open. Is open. Clear? Clear. So union of any arbitrary family of open sets is open. Okay. Okay. Point number two. If you have a countable family of open sets, right? Okay. That is, suppose if if um, G one, G two, so until G n. Is a family of open sets. Is a family of open sets. Okay. Then, then intersection I equals to one. The intersection of all these open sets is open. Okay. So in case of union, uh, the number of open sets we take is not a matter of concern. But in case of the intersection, the number of open sets must be 
finite. Okay, when we will be proving this, we will understand that why this concept of finiteness is important in this property number two. Okay, let's see. Okay, so first we prove the first problem. And this is very very trivial to prove. Okay. So we choose. So we choose let G alpha alpha belonging to lambda be a family of open sets. Be a family of open sets. And let and let G be the union of all these open sets. Okay. To prove to prove is G is open. Okay. So to prove G is open, what we can do? So we can basically show that every point in G is an interior point. Every point in G is an interior point. Okay. Now if G is empty, if G is empty, it is trivial. No need to prove. So number two become that is G is non-empty. G is non-empty. Okay. And let us take an element from G. Let A belong to G. Now if A belongs to G, then that implies A belongs to G alpha for some alpha belongs to lambda okay now this implies that if if so happens <coughs> then the open ball centered at a and radius r that belongs to some g that, that is contained in some g alpha right that is contained in some g alpha so that implies for some for some r greater than 0 open ball with center at a and radius r is completely contained in g alpha which implies it is so for some alpha belongs to lambda which implies this is completely contained in g which implies a is an interior point of g which implies g is open since a is arbitrary is it clear? Okay. So, arbitrary union of family of open sets is Gaussian open set. Next, move on to the concept of intersection. Okay. So, proof number two. Okay. The goal of the proof is same. Number two. So, let G1, G2, so on till Gn be a finite family finite family of open sets okay let g equals to intersection i from 1 to n g i okay to prove to prove g is open and to prove it what we can what what we need to show is that if you take any element from g if you take any element from g then its intersection is open if you take any element from g then its intersection is open Let's try and prove this. So first to take an element from G n. So we in this case we are not considering a trivial case at all. So we are just choosing G to be non-empty. So G be non-empty. Because if it is empty, then it's it's trivial, right? So it be non-empty. That implies there exists some element in G. Okay. So if there exists some element in G, then that implies that A belongs to G alpha for all alpha belongs to lambda. Sorry, in this case we are considering a finite case, right? So it belongs to G alpha for all alpha equals to 1, 2, till n. Clear? <coughs> Clear? Okay. Now if so happens, if so happens, then that implies, then that implies there exists R alpha for all G alphas R alpha greater than 0 for all G alphas such that alpha equals to 1 2 till n such that U A R alpha is contained in G alpha right corresponding cases because in every every such open set the radius might not be same right okay for every every open set G alpha there is some radius r alpha and then what we do we take the minimum of all the alpha. so considering considering 
r equals to minimum of all such r alphas so for alpha equals to 1 to n we have we have u a r is contained in g alpha for all alpha equals to 1 to n which implies u a r is contained in g which implies g is good right <coughs> now see in this particular proof we have used the concept of minima right in this proof we have used the concept of minima if this family was infinite we could not have used the concept of minima we should we would have needed to use the concept of supremum and we know the supremum of some arbitrary set can be zero right that is the reason why we cannot use the we cannot use an infinite family of open sets we need to use a finite family of open sets let us see let us see an example to say so so suppose you you take this this uh, this infinite family of open sets of the form minus 1 by n to n for all n belongs to natural numbers okay okay what this intersection intersection mean what will this intersection be so for all n belongs to natural numbers this intersection let this be g alpha let this be g alpha g g i let's say g n g n is g n is equals to zero singleton set zero right the element intersection of all these open open intervals is zero which is not open it is not open singleton set zero is not open is it clear is it clear <coughs> got it okay okay so now next comes a very important theorem let's see very important theorem <coughs> So in a metric space X D, which is a metric space, let x y belongs to the metric space and they are not equal to each other. Okay. Then, then there exists disjoint, disjoint open sets, disjoint open sets G one and G two. Such that x belongs to G1 and y belongs to G2. Okay. The proof of this is an exercise. You can do it on your own. Okay. It is very general. Giving. I am just giving you. A, okay. Suppose the distance between x and y is r. Okay. Suppose the distance between x and y is r. So form two open sets. One at center x and radius r by 2, and one at center y and uh, radius r by 2. So you will get two disjoint open sets. And x and y being center of each of them, they will be inside those open sets. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Next thing. Let's see. So the next property is that now suppose suppose x is a non-empty matrix space. We are already you know very much. Known about this particular set, which is called the power set of X, or rather, set of all subsets of X. Okay, set of all, set of all subsets of X. Okay. Now, what we do is that uh, we take some some uh, element from 2 to the power X, which will indeed be a family of some sets, some subsets of X, rather, right? So we take choose, so we choose so some we choose some tau. From X, contained in X, collection of elements. So, tau is basically family of family of subsets of X. 
family of subsets of it, right? Now here comes a very important definition, the defi definition of what we call topology, okay? So this tau, this family of subsets of this tau is called a topology, is called a topology. If, number one, the null set belongs to tau and this whole set x belongs to tau. Number two, if g alpha belongs to tau for all alpha belonging to indexing set lambda then their union also belongs to tau okay union also belongs to tau and point number three if there exists a finite number of elements finite number of sets g1 g2 g3 till gn in tau then the intersection of all these sets is also in tau. So, uh, isn't the, uh, aren't these properties similar to open sets? Right? If tau is a collection of all open sets, then will all these three properties be, be valid? Phi is an open set. The whole metric space itself is an open set. If you choose an arbitrary family of open sets, then the union is an open set. If you choose a finite family of open sets, then the intersection is also an open set. So an example of tau can be the set of collection of all open sets of x. Example, tau is the collection of all open sets of x. All open sets of x. Okay? Is it clear? This metric space X and the family of subsets tau, which obey these three properties, they are called the topological space. It's called the topological space. Okay. Every metric space, every metric space can induce a topological space, but every topological space may not be a metric space. Topological space is a higher class of sets, higher class of systems, higher class of study where uh, the properties or the topics inside topological space are mainly concerned and described, or described with the help of open sets. Okay, In metric space, the explanations are on the basis of distances, while in case of topological space, the explanations are on the basis of open sets. Okay, okay. So, I am just writing it down here. Every, every metric space every metric space induces induces a topological space induces a topological space while converse is not clear clear every metric space induces a topological space while the converse is okay or we can say it like this also that every metric induces a topology every metric induces a topology <coughs> okay now suppose if this tau is the is tau is all the uh, is, is the set of all the subsets of of x x being some metric space where xd is some metric space okay then we say this to be a discrete topology then tau is a discrete topology discrete topology why is it called a discrete topology the reason is that the reason is that see if you take a discrete metric let xd be a discrete metric A discrete now uh, is every singleton set in x is an open set is every singleton set in x is an open set right every singleton set is an every singleton is open right? which implies the union of all such singleton sets is also open. Is also open. 
which implies every subset of x is an open set every subset of x is an open set so that is the reason why tau which is indeed the collection of all such subsets is an so it is called a discrete topology because union of every singleton set will give rise to subsets of x every every possible subset is it clear is it clear one more thing if you take a metric space x and you choose the open set to be phi the collection of open sets to be null that's called an indiscrete topology called an indiscrete indiscrete topology okay indiscrete topology and one more definition which comes from here is the horsdorf topology okay hors dorf topology okay so any topological space any x tau is a hausdorff topology is a hausdorff topology if x d is such a metric space is such a metric space such a metric space in which in which for all non empty elements there exists there exists uh, mutually disjoint open balls there exists mutually uh, or there exist disjoint open sets disjoint open sets g1 and g2 such that x belongs to g1 and y belongs to g2 okay this property is called the hausdorff property Which we have already given as a uh, as an exercise in the proof, it, it is called a Hausdorff Hausdorff property. And any metric space which has the Hausdorff property and a topology which is induced by that metric space, it is called the Hausdorff topology. Now see, this is pretty much trivial to see that any metric space has the Hausdorff property. Okay, I tell you, any metric space. any metric space has hausdorff property that is hausdorff property that means any topology induced by a metric space is always a hausdorff topology any metric space induced by eh, sorry any topology induced by a metric space is a hausdorff topology but every topology must might not be induced by a metric space so every topology might not be hausdorff property any topology induced by a metric space is a hausdorff topology okay so okay so basically what happens is that i have written the definition a bit a bit wrong so i write it like this let me write it like this okay any x tau is a hausdorff topology if in which yeah now it's now it's okay okay so if x is a metric space then this condition is always okay so tau is always a hausdorff topology and if x is not a metric space then also tau might be a hausdorff topology if it it if it is obey, obeys this hausdorff property okay okay so let this this should be up in this mark guys in the next lecture we will be talking about open sets in r So open set is the real line, and then we will be talking about limit points, and from there we will move on to the concept of closed sets. Okay, we'll meet you guys in the next lecture.